So I've actually only been uh, working in a consciousness lab for six months. So I'm by no means a world expert, but you know, I, I can tell you a lot about it. And I, I love that name, by the way, consciousness yeah. lab. Conscious, yeah, it consciousness sounds like, lab. Yeah. sounds like yeah. a, a booth at Coachella or something. Well, you know, if I go outside of academia and I tell people here in LA what I'm doing, they're probably going to think it's, you know, some kind of BS. Like, um, you yeah. know, like, what is this, like Scientology or something? I won't even blame them if that right. were Right, but then you reaction, start talking right? for six seconds and it's like, yeah. oh no, that's, that's science. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. So so, yeah, so what do you guys do? Yeah, yeah so I, I should say that, um, you know, our lab's claim to fame, I can't take any credit for this because this was long before I was involved, but um, uh, Martin and his group had this 2010 New England Journal of Medicine paper where they basically demonstrate something that works like a consciousness detector. So before I explain what it is, I think I should back up a step and set up the motivation. So disorders of consciousness, these include things like a coma, minimally conscious state, vegetative state. So, you know, most people know what a coma is. You have a stroke or a traumatic brain injury and your responsiveness and awareness is diminished as a result. And there are many different prognoses one can have. You know, some people, they end up walking and talking, but before they get there, they may be in a minimally conscious state where they can respond to some simple commands. They can move their finger. They can make some vocalizations to communicate, but they're not fully there. Hence the name minimally conscious state. Mm -hmm. um, a worse prognosis would be a vegetative state. So in a vegetative state, um, it's different from a coma because you have sleep and wake cycles. The eyes might be open. You might have some reflexive movements, but there's no evidence of consciousness. Okay, there's no purposeful behavior. So right. um, Terry Schiavo would be the most famous example of a vegetative state. Now, the misdiagnosis rate for disorders of consciousness is very high. Okay, it's something like 40%. So in 40% of cases... Um, the person is more there than we thought they were or perhaps less there, but that would seem very strange. Um, so the motivation is very high to build something like a consciousness detector. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess another example uh, of where this would be useful is actually general anesthesia. So it's very frightening to think about, but a lot of people go under and they say that they remember everything that happened. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've heard of this. Yeah. So we really want to know if someone's conscious or not. Mm -hmm. And at first this just seems hopeless because... Well, um, it's a inherently subjective phenomenon. So, you know, how can you know if you're conscious without being that person? Yeah. But there are some tricks. So uh, Marin and his group, they developed this very clever paradigm where you take some people who are in a coma or vegetative state and you put them in an fMRI machine. So um, for those who don't know, this is a very powerful magnet. You can put a person inside, you can image the human body. And you can also view metabolic brain activity. You basically, you're seeing which parts of the brain use more oxygen, okay? And so you put the person in an fMRI scanner and you ask them some questions. Now, obviously, most of these people are totally out. They don't, they're not aware of anything. They don't know that they're in an MRI scanner. They don't know that you're asking mm -hmm. them anything. They're not receiving stimuli. Exactly. Well, the stimuli, you know, it or might... they're falling on deaf, yeah, 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 on yeah, deaf yeah, brain, might, so to speak. It might hit the first two synapses, and then, right. you know, when it gets to the cortex, there's, there's yeah. no one home. But, um, but for a small but substantial proportion of these people, they actually, um, they're awake inside and they understand. And so you might ask them, uh, is your name Dave? If yes, please imagine that you're playing tennis. If no, please imagine that you're walking through all the rooms of your house. And those two activities, they have very different neural signatures in the fMRI machine. Wow. So you, yeah, you, you look at the, the fMRI and you actually see if the person's imagining playing tennis, imagining walking through all the rooms of their house, or they're just not thinking anything. Because okay. one is one one type of brain activity is like localized in a certain area, or the other one is diffuse, or they're both diffuse. Um, you know, there are actually very few cognitive activities that are completely localized to to one region, but they have different patterns. Okay, mm -hmm. and so you look at these patterns of activity. Uh, you know, for example, if you're walking through all the rooms of your house, um, you know, you're, that's more kind of like an exploratory behavior than playing tennis, where sure you're moving, but you're not. It's not really an exploratory activity. Mm -hmm. So you look at the fMRI and you can actually see if the person understands and you would ask them, you know, several questions, uh, mostly questions you already know the answer to so that you can validate that they really understood. Mm -hmm. You know, if they get their date of birth wrong, then, you know, something's not right here. But yeah, so a sub and this has been replicated that a substantial, small but substantial proportion of people, they're, um, they're able to understand and they're, they're awake even though they're, you know, they have no overt behavior. That's, that's, that's bananas. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, it's, 
we're, we're taking the only mm-hmm. tool we have. Right? If they're not responsive, they cannot move or respond in any way. But if there's brain activity that they can, they can direct that brain activity and we can, and we can interpret it and yes. gain useful information. So yes. are, are we using this? Is this something like where somebody's in a coma or a vegetative state and we need to know, are we going to pull the plug? Are we going to do this? What are we going to do? And we can use this and check if they're in there or not. Right. Right. Do yeah. We, so do I we do this. Yeah. So I had a feeling you were going to ask me that. Mm-hmm. I mean, the answer is right now. No. So, um, Why not? The, we the, should be doing this. Uh, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's the that's the end game, right? Yeah. And in the future, it's possible.